All right. So what went wrong? Uh, troubling JavaScript. Uh, uh, when you built up the guess the number game in the previous article, you may have found that it didn't work. Uh, never fear. This article aims to save you from. <clears throat> uh, this article aims to save you from tearing your hair out over such problems by providing you with some simple tips on how to find and fix errors in JavaScript programs. Uh, prerequisites, basic uh, computer literacy, a basic understanding of HTML and CSS, and understanding of what JavaScript is. To gain uh, the objective, to gain the ability to, and confidence to start fixing simple problems on your own code, in your own code. Uh, types of errors. Generally speaking, when you do something wrong in code, there are two main types of errors that you'll come across. Syntax errors. Uh, these are spelling errors in your code that actually cause the problem not to run at all or stop working partway through. It will usually be provided with some error messages too. These are usually okay to fix. You are familiar uh, with the right tools and know what the error messages mean. Um, logic errors. These are errors where the syntax is actually correct, but the code is not uh, what you intended it to be. Meaning that program runs successfully, but gives incorrect results. These are often harder to fix than syntax errors as they usually, there usually isn't a resulting error message to direct you to the source of the error. Okay, so it's not quite that simple. There are some other differentiators as you go down deeper, uh, but above the classifications will do, but the above classifications will do at this early stage in your career will look at both of these types going forward. Uh, an erroneous example. Get started, let's start to, uh, excuse me, to get started, let's return to our number guessing game. Um, except this time, we'll be exploring a version that has some deliberate errors introduced. Go to GitHub and make sh uh, yourself a local copy of number game errors uh, dot HTML. See it running live here. So let's open up. All right, so we're going to get ourselves copy of this. And I'll go ahead and open that over here. Make a new directory and call it trouble or what should I call it? Uh, what went wrong? What went wrong? Make that folder. And I'll see against that folder. And I'll create a HTML file. All right, so I'm going to open this up.
right, here we go. We've got our index. Save that. So it says, to get started, open the local copy inside your favorite text editor and your browser. So let's open this up in a browser. Move this to the side, open this live. And uh, it says, try playing the game. Uh, and it says, you'll notice uh, that when you press the submit guest button, it doesn't work. So. As a side note, uh, you might well have your own version of the game example that doesn't work, which you might want to fix. Uh, we'd like you to work through the article with our version so that you can learn the techniques we are teaching here. Then you can go back and try to fix your example. Uh, at this point, uh, let's consult the developer council to see if we can see any syntax errors. Then try to fix them. You'll learn how below. So fixing syntax errors. Earlier on in the course, we got you to type some simple JavaScript commands into the developer tools JavaScript console. Can't remember how to open this in your browser. Uh, follow the previous link to find out how. What's even more useful is that the council gives you error messages whenever a syntax error exists inside the JavaScript fed into the browser's JavaScript engine. Now let's go hunting. Uh, number one, go to the tab that you've got number game errors.html open in. And open your JavaScript console. You should see an error message along the lines, along the following lines. Okay. Mine is showing type error. Yep. Mine is showing type error. Yeah, that's it's supposed to say that. We're troubleshooting. They purposely put that error in there, so they're gonna go over why that error is there. Um now number two, uh it says this is pretty easy. This is a pretty easy error to track down and the browser gives you several useful bits of information to help you out. Um, the screenshot above is from Firefox, but other browsers uh, provide similar information. Uh, from left to right, we've got a red X to indicate that this is an error. Uh, an error message to indicate what's gone wrong. It says type error. Uh, guess submit dot add event listener uh, is not a function. Um, it says a learn more link uh, that links through to an MDN page that explains what this error means in huge amounts of detail. Uh, the name of the JavaScript file which links through to the debugger tab of the dev tools. If you follow this link, you'll see the exact line where the error is highlighted. Okay. It says the line number where the error is. <coughs> Excuse me, the line number where the error is and the character number in that line where the error is first seen. In this case, we've got line 86, character number three. Uh, number three, if we look at line 86 in our code editor, uh, we'll find this line. It's, uh, guess. It's line two, uh, on, yours, on your local one. So 
that a guesstimate added by guesstimate should be combined into. I know it's just weird. Uh, did you off it a little bit? What happened? Oh, it looks like uh, line 82 is where our error, error would be. The guest submit dot add event listener. Line 82. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> nice catch. Um, yeah, so number, uh, number four, it says, uh, error message says, Man, we should send, first of all, we should send like a pull request or something to, to fix that. <laughs> that needs to be fixed. <laughs> the error message says, guess submit that add event listener is not a function. So we've probably spelled something wrong. If you are not sure of the correct spelling of a piece of syntax, it is often good to look it up, uh, to look up the feature on MDN. The best way to do this correctly is to search for uh, MDN uh, name of feature on your favorite search engine. Here's a shortcut to save you some time in, the, in, uh, in this instance. Um, add event listener. And it'll give us uh, information about the feature. All right, so it says, so looking at this page, the errors appear to be that we've spelled the function name wrong. Uh, remember that JavaScript is case sensitive, so any slight difference in spelling or casing will cause an error. Uh, changing add event listener to add event listener uh, with a capital for event should fix this. Uh, so let's do this now. The side note, CR type error X is not a function reference page for more details about this error. All right, so it says save your page and refresh and you should see the error has gone. Yeah. All right, now, and it says now, if you try to enter a guess and press the submit guess button, you'll see another error. Line 47. Line 74. All right. Now number three. This time the error being reported is type error low or high is no on line 78 um and you said it's line uh, yeah all right uh no um Null is a special value that means nothing. Um, or no value. So low or high has been declared and initialized, but not with any meaningful value. It has no type or value. Uh, another side note, this error didn't come up as soon as the page was loaded because the error occurred inside a function, inside the check guess as you'll learn in more detail in our later functions article, code inside functions runs in a separate scope than code outside functions. In this case, the code has not run and the error has not thrown, uh, was not thrown until the guest check function uh, was run by line 86. Um, so number four, have a look at line 78 and you'll see the following code. Uh, low or high that text content in the last test was too high. All right. 
Yep. So for us, it's line 74. Um, all right, so we see that. This line is trying to set the text content property of the low or high variable to a text string. But it's not working because low or high does not contain what it's supposed to. Let's see why this is. Try searching for other in instances of low or high in the code. The earliest instance you'll find in the JavaScript is on line 48. And it says var low or high equals document query selector uh, low or high. So it's on line 47 for us. Uh, this line is trying to set the text content property of the lower high variable to a uh, text string, but it's not working because lower high does not contain what it's supposed to. Let's see what this is. Try searching uh, for other instances of lower high in the code. The earliest instance is on, the JavaScript is on line 48. So we found that um, at this point, we are trying to make the variable contain a reference to an element in the document HTML. Let's check whether the value is null after this line has been run. Uh, add the following code on line 48. Um, this is say add the following code on line 49. Or no, no. So yeah, it's just where low or high is, just press uh, enter, make a new line under yes. it. And line, and, um, yeah, that's cool. There you go. So add that on line 48. Um, and then note, uh, console.log is really, is a really useful debugging function that prints a value to the console. So it will print the value of low or high to the council as soon as we have tried to set it in line 48. All right, so it says save and refresh and you should now see the council log result in your All right, we see it. Sure enough, uh, low or high's value is null at this point. So there's definitely a problem with line 48, or in our case, line 47. Uh, number eight, let's think about what the problem could be. Line 47 is using a document.querySelector method uh, to get a reference to an element by selecting it with CSS, with the CSS selector. Um, looking further up our file, we can find the paragraph in question. Uh, so that would be P class equals low or high. All right. Um, so we need, uh, we need a class selector here, which begins with a dot the selector being passed into the query selector method in line 48 has no dot. Uh, this could be uh, the problem. Try changing lower high to dot lower high in line 47. Returning the old um, um, HTML tag. So. What was that? The container of log is returning the old HTML tag. 
Oh, no, I, I can't hear you. I still can't hear you, bro. Your mic is kind of muffled a little bit. Can you Yeah. I said, I was just wrong. Like I said, the least emitter is coming out of control. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a dot right here, a period right there, and uh, right after document.query selector on line 47. And we're going to save it. And it's going to change, and it's going to give us uh, this right here. Okay. Um, it says, try saving and refreshing again, and your council block statement should return the P element we want. <laughs> it says, few, another error fixed. You can delete your council log uh, line now or keep it to reference uh, later on, your choice. So for a side note, it says, see our type error X is not Y reference page. Um, for more details about this error, um, syntax errors round three. Now, uh, number one. Now, if you try playing the game again, you should get more success. The game should play through absolutely fine. You end the game. The game either by until you end the game, either by guessing the right number or by running out of lives. Number two. At that point, the game fails again, and the same error is spat out that we got at the beginning. Type error reset button uh, dot add event listener is not a function. However, this time it's not listed as coming from line 94. Uh, number three, looking at line number 94, it is easy to see that we've made the same mistake here. We again just need to change add event listener to, or yeah, to dot add event listener. Um, do this now. Uh, a logic error. At this point, the game should play through fun. However, after playing through a few times, you'll undoubtedly notice that the random number you've got to guess is always zero or one not quite what we want the game to play out. There's definitely a problem in the um, there's definitely a problem in the game logic somewhere. The game is not returning an error. Um, it just isn't playing right. So number one, search for the random number variable and the lines where the random number is first set. the instance that stores the random number that we want to guess at the start of the game should be around line number 44.
looks like they got that one right. All right, and it says. Is, and the one that generates the random number before each subsequent game is around line 113. All right. It says to check whether these lines are indeed the problem. Let's turn. Yeah, like what? Like. Um, actually, for us, it's going to be on line 110. Okay. Um, it says number two, check uh, whether these lines are indeed the problem. Let's turn to our friend Council Love again. Insert the following line directly below each of the two, or excuse me, above, directly below each of the above two lines. So we're gonna add council log. Okay. All right, it says save and refresh and play the play a few games. You'll see that random number is equal to one at each point where it is logged into the council. So that and view our page. I think the logic is uh, still working. I think it's still fit or uh, broken. No, you didn't refresh the page. No, it was still on the same page because it didn't show uh, console log. Also, save the so put the console log back in, save the file, and refresh the page. This is fantastic. Yeah, but you see it's still returning uh no, did you refresh did you actually refresh the page like yeah, refresh it? yeah i refreshed it and i have the oh. light, i have the light oh, cool. sorry i didn't, I didn't see it. my bad that's cool dude. yeah so do you see uh, above uh class key lower high you see the number one yeah that's what's console logging so you could check so so also what you could do if you ever like so let's say you're doing multiple variables and they have the same name right so you could technically uh uh, do some like quote so like um, wait I want to see this movie 
Uh -huh. So that catalog, you can put like quotes before it and say like, you know, random number, line, 112, or whatever you want to put. First random number, second random number, and then a comma after that. And so you can identify the catalog. No, you have to do it inside of the uh, inside of the console log in quotes because it's it's anything inside of it is going to show up onto that console log. You're, you're creating a something completely different, right? So just put so put like double quotes in there. Whatever you want to identify it as, right? Some random number. Yeah. After the quotes, you put a, a comma, and then save and refresh. So. For for uh, for yours is a uh, one and zero still like the working number to still like solve the equation or the the problem? What do you mean? So I guess the logic with it is broken, and it's telling us to fix the fix the logic because for every time it's not giving us a random number because one and zero are the answers. Like it, right. it just keeps returning. Right, because random number number function it gives you literally a number between zero and one like it gives you a, a, a so decimal you, you multiply by oh, oh, oh oh okay so that's okay. so technically we, we you haven't completed the, the, the logic or technically they left out the logic where it returns you a number right so if you just like if you just do random number by itself uh, it returns a number between zero and one, whatever and so we have math dot ceiling, uh, math dot ceiling connected to it. So it technically gives you returns a whole number. So, but there, like I was just trying to show you within the uh, console log that you can add like essentially an identifying. Rather than put the uh, have like multiple console logs and you're not sure what it belongs to, you can technically like put some text in there. That way you know which uh, which one you're looking at. It looks right. like that one. So, is there another random number that we have a console log tied to? Uh, yeah. Uh, line. Where is it? Line. Oh, uh, one, one thing. And line one foot. Line foot to four. I guess we're doing it the right way then, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, because this is just identifying. This has nothing to do with the troubleshooting. You're like trying to, like at this point, all you're doing is actually identifying why it's wrong, right? Like, uh, it. okay. We haven't even started to actually troubleshoot the actual error. We're just trying to identify it. You know what? In the next sentence, it actually says that. Right. <laughs> It says save and refresh and play a few games and you'll see that random number is equal to one at each point where it is logged to the council. <laughs> there we go. All right, so working through the logic to fix this, let's consider how this line is working. First, we invoke math.random, which generates a random decimal number between zero and one. Um, for example, Point, uh, 0 0.567 it says next result of invoking math rent dot random through math dot four which rounds the number past uh which rounds the number passed to it down to the nearest whole number. Uh, we then add one to that result. What 
Hatte? Ja. Uh, you, you, you're kind of muffled, but I can hear you. Uh, like I was saying, uh, the, like the, the, um, this one, the max, uh, like from what they said, like when um, this uh, function runs, it always give us one. Because when uh, max, max does random, returns um, something, a number between one. One and uh, one, zero and one. Round the one to the nearest one number. There's no number to any thing between one and one and zero and one is zero. So it always gives us one. I'm looking for a different value to that. Right. He's just rehashing what we just did in the first two. So then keep reading them and we'll figure out the solution to it. Okay. Uh, so it says. In a random decimal number between zero and one down will always return zero. So add in one, two, it will always return one. We need to multiply the random number by 100 before we round it down. The following would give us a random number between zero and 99. Uh, so math. Uh, um, that's a dot. So math dot four, math dot random, um, times one, or the asterisk of one hundred. So hence, us wanting to add one to give us a random number between one and one hundred. Uh, so math dot four, dot random, uh, times one hundred plus one. Try updating both these lines like this, then save and refresh. The game should now play like we uh, like we were intending it to. All right, so let's see. Got that saved, refresh, and let's see. Fix it right up. Try updating both lines like this, save and refresh. The game should not work as intended. Other common errors. There are other common errors you'll come across in your code. Section highlights most of them. Uh, so syntax error missing uh, it generally means that you have missed a semicolon at the end of one of your lines of code, but it can sometimes be more cryptic. For example, if we change this line inside the check guess function, so var check guess equals number guess field dot value to var user uh, is that uh is that strictly equal strictly, uh, no, uh, strictly equal is the second one when the first one is just assigning uh, yeah it goes uh, into the paragraph after it'll explain all right uh number get field dot value and it throws this error because it thinks you're trying um, it says it throws this error because it thinks you are trying to do something different. Uh, you should make sure that 
you don't mix up the assignment operator, um, which that's a variable to be equal to a value with the strict equality operator. Test whether one value is equal to another and returns a true false result. Um, note our syntax error missing the for statement reference page for more details about this error. Uh, the program always says you won regardless of the guess you enter. This could be another symptom of mixing up the assignment and the quality operator. Uh, for example, if we were to change this line inside chat guess. So if user strict uh, equality random number to if user equals random number. The test would always return true, causing the program to uh, be careful. Uh, syntax error missing after argument list. This one is pretty simple. It generally means that you've missed the closing problem off the number of function method call. Note the our syntax error missing after argument list reference page for more details about this error. Syntax error missing after property ID. Uh, this error usually relates to an incorrect we formed JavaScript object. We managed to get it by chain uh, function, check guess, uh, to function, check guess, with uh, only uh, one parentheses there. Uh, this has caused the browser to think that we are trying to pass contents of the function into the as an um, be careful with those parentheses so syntax error uh, missing after function body this is easy it generally means that you've missed one of your curly braces from a function or conditional additional structure we got this leading one of um, uh, closing curly braces here, the uh, bottom of the check guess function. Syntax error expected expression got string or syntax error unterminated string literal. These errors generally mean that you've missed off a uh, string values opening or closing quote mark. In the first error above, string unexpected characters that the browser found instead of a quote mark at the start of a string. Second error means that the string has not been, en has not been ended with a quote mark. For all these errors, think about how we tackled the examples we looked at in the walkthrough when an error ends. Look at the line number you are given, go to that line and plot what's wrong. Bear in mind that uh, the error is not necessarily going to be on that line. And also that the error might not be caused by the exact same problem we cited above. Um, side note, see syntax error, unexpected token, and syntax error. Bring the reference pages for more details about these errors. Summary. So there we have it. The basics of figuring out errors is simple uh, in, in simple JavaScript programs. It won't always be that simple to work out what's wrong in your code, but at least this will save you a few hours of sleep and allow you to progress a bit faster when things don't turn out earlier on your journey. All right. So, what's that?